high rises, low rises, bungalows, condos, vans, yards, homes, empty lots, around the corner and over the hills. Everyone lives next to someone. No matter where in the world you are, your neighbors are part of your place. And we know that strong communities build a happy life. But what might it feel like to really know your neighbors, to ignore the distractions and decide that now is the right time to say hello and feel connected to your community? I'm Maceo, artist and curator who looks at the way society and culture shape our life and ideas. I'm here to tell you about how neighboring can be a verb in your life. Neighboring is something you do, something you continuously work at. It's a practice, but maybe you've never really tried it before. So I'm here to dive in with you on the basics, building trust with your neighbors. Come on in. Many of our first interactions with our neighbors are born from a place of conflict. Music's too loud, trash cans stay out too long, your dog's on my lawn. But what if things were different? Trust is a way of building support with the communities, friends, and people around us. But earning trust isn't just about being together. It's about showing a willingness to work together, realizing that we're all humans. Trust isn't just earned, it's learned. It might seem trivial, but small talk is an important way of breaking down the barriers and establishing familiarity. The more we learn about each other, we realize that it's not about being similar, but having common goals. And we all want our neighborhoods and our communities to thrive. The more we can trust together, the more we can work together, and the more we can accomplish. So what does establishing a trusting relationship with your neighbor actually look like? Checking in, calling when they're out of town, exchanging or loaning yard tools, maybe house sitting. Perhaps it's sharing a set of keys. Let's imagine a world where we no longer need porch cameras, where our neighbors are truly a part of our social circle. In order to build trust, we have to make ourselves vulnerable. So what are some tips that we can use to make that happen? The first thing we can do is make a friend out of a stranger. If you feel nervous about talking to someone new, think about some positive characteristics about yourself. This takes the focus off of your judgment of yourself and what they might be thinking of you and reminds you that you're human, they're human, and we're meeting on equal footing. This gives us the opportunity to neutralize some of that nervousness and give us a confidence boost. Second, feel comfortable naming the elephant in the room. If you've lived there for a while and haven't said anything, it's okay to acknowledge that. People realize things happen, time goes by, and before you know it, you're feeling anxious about not having spoken, and that keeps you from speaking. So give space to that. The next thing you can do is let them know why you're talking to them in the first place. Are you new to the neighborhood and looking for friends? Do you need to borrow some tools? Are you just wanting to introduce yourself? That allows us all to have common ground, understanding what the interaction is about, and that contributes to trust. Finally, it's okay to draft up your talking points. We can find ourselves rambling if we get caught in our own uneasiness, and that can make it difficult to connect. Making a relationship isn't about putting on a show. It's about reaching each other with emotion and vulnerability, finding ourselves with a common space, a human space. Once you've established trust and put a face and a name to your neighbors, it becomes easier to develop friends, supporters, and community. And any conflict that does arise can begin to be addressed with an understanding of respect and care. I look forward to sharing more about the practice of neighboring. Thank you for thinking about your place in the world with me. I hope you feel at home today.